All right, so I've been asked to show you 216. This is uh, from uh, CC2 2.1.1. Okay, so CC2 2.1.1 is what we're looking at. Let me get it up a little bit here so you can see this. All right, so we are looking at um, what we call diamond problems in this textbook. So this textbook refers to these as diamond problems. Um, and in an introduction to them at seventh grade, and then we heavily lose them in eighth grade. But so the first thing is it says to find the patterns, right? So we're fine. It says finding patterns is an important problem solving skill using mathematics. You will use the patterns and diamond problems to solve other problems later in this course. Can you discover a pattern for the problems in each of the four diamond problems below? So here's my numbers, right? So the first one, you've got a 10 on top a seven on bottom and then a five and a two so they want to know can you see the pattern what is a relationship with five and two and ten and seven over here you have a two and an eight and a 16 and a 10. so what's the relationship once you see it you're going to go aha so five what times two is ten so five times two on top is the ten and then now do you see the bottom? The bottom is five plus two is seven. So does that pattern work over here? Two times eight, so you take those two numbers and multiply, yep, that's 16. Two plus eight is 10, that works. So let's check these two. So again, so eight times seven is 56, and then eight plus seven is 15. So these are the numbers that you either multiply, so we call that a product on top, and then add, and we call that a sum on the bottom. Sure enough, 4 times 1 is 4, and then four, 1 plus 4 is 5. So there's our, there's our pattern. So now once we know the pattern, we've got to do each of the questions. So they want us to take and copy these down on our page and complete each diamond problem. Right, so the pattern, product on top, sum on the bottom. So if I look at this first one here, three and four, so three times four is 12 on top, three plus four is seven on the bottom. This one here, two plus three is five, two, um, oh, whoa, 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 oops, I did it wrong. See, look at that. It's two times three on top is six, and then two plus three on the bottom is five. Okay, product on top, sum on the bottom. Now, this one's interesting because this one, we don't know this number, but they do give us the product. So the question is, what times two is 12, right? To figure this out, you gotta figure out what, what that number is. So it's the, it's the something times two is 12. What is that something? Oh, well that's six, six times two is 12. Once I get that number, now I can fill out the bottom, six plus two to get eight. This one's even trickier. I gotta find two numbers that multiply to be 28, but add to be 11. So this is where maybe once you, you know your product is 28, start writing the factors, right? We know it's one times 28. We know it's two times 14, three times, uh, nope, no three, four, that should be a four, four times seven. Yep, four times seven. And then it just repeats seven times four and 14 times two. So if we look, are any of these add to be 11? Sure enough, we see four times seven is 28 and four plus seven is 11. So the four and seven go there. So that's how that works.